Greetings! <laughs> Today, we're going to talk about this incredible IPA and of course we're going to talk about the ball it's going to be great Gonna use the nice opener here. Okay, so it's been a while. In fact, I just want to read the story first. <laughs> okay, the Var City. The Varsity was a 67 foot long fishing vessel from Gig Harbor, Washington on the night of February 5th, 1940. While the Varsity was returning home, the captain made a grave error. He mistook a flashing light for the Umatilla Lighthouse where in reality, the ship was over 14 miles northwest of Cape Flattery, closer to Pachina Point on Vancouver Island. Crashing into Vancouver Island, the ship calls out a distress signal just in time, but to the wrong coordinates. Imagine that, that's what happens when you use the globe. Okay, a lifeboat is launched with seven sailors aboard, but they're immediate, they immediately slip, but three immediately slip off and are never seen again. <laughs> Another wave hits as the lifeboat gets close to shore, knocking three of the four remaining sailors into the water. Oh my gosh, disappearing into the depths. The remaining crew are rescued by the Coast Guard vessel Onondaga three days later, but the rest of the crew is never found. Oh my gosh. Wow. So what this beer is about, <laughs> that's a tragic story. Uh, lacking logic, caution, or restraint, Numbskull is a hard-hitting and intense double IPA. To discover the most exceptional flavors, each new rotation is an ex rotation, I love it. That's what we're gonna talk about today, is an experiment in hop lunacy. This ninth edition unveils the Equinaut Hop. Oh my gosh. Okay. Resinous with layers of fresh citrus and grassy spice. Salute the voyagers returning and revel in the good fortune they've escorted back to port. Lighthouse Brewing Company is a family owned and operated craft brewery proudly brewing out of Victoria, BC since 1998. At Lighthouse, we are dedicated to brewing high quality, delicious small batch craft beer for people who love great beer as much as we do. Extra strong beer, ingredients, water, malt, hops, and yeast. Okay, so I think we're ready now. That was the warm up. We're just, this is the once and for all. We're gonna destroy uh, the globe today. Simply put, no crack, body can spin. That's it. And a solid body has limits to spinning, okay? There's a physical limit 
to how fast you can spin. Okay, let's try this out. Oh, it's amazing. I had a different rotation of this beer in the summer. I didn't get to film it, but it was blue here. And it had three different hops in it. And it was kind of fruity. Oh, and this is almost the same. So glad I got this one. Okay, now. We have an incredible sunset going on behind us too. Uh, maybe I'll show that a little later. Try to take advantage of all the light. Try to get the video done as fast as possible. Okay. Now, where are we gonna start? Okay, some people seem to think that you can live on a spinning ball, okay? But it just so happens that that's just a imaginary idea. <laughs> I don't know. How else to put it? It's a joke. So what I want to show then, you know, we've gone over all this before. Um, we want to get into, I think we're going to start with understanding the force relationships in a solid body that spins. Let's say like this apple. Okay, this apple is solid, of course, and we have a video that when you spin this apple fast enough, <clears throat> it was done by the slow-mo guys, it splits as if you cut it with a knife. Okay, we've talked about this in all the other videos, okay? Like you cut it with a knife, so if, it's, if this stem here is the North Pole, and you're spinning around the axis, okay? Like that, all right? The fastest part is going to be the equator, let's say, because it's the widest. And the apple, lo and behold, will show you how it breaks. Okay. The apple breaks like that. It literally explodes well, I want to eat this. <laughs> okay? It literally explodes like this. Okay? It's spinning, spinning, spinning. Then all of a sudden, it just breaks apart. And you see this in slow motion. Okay? But I don't want to use their video because, you know, I'm going to get some kind of, uh, oh, you're using someone else's video and... Then they're going to put ads. So here it is, okay? This is how a spinning body breaks, like that. And in the video I mentioned before, a tiny little piece of the apple also broke off on its own and it had such force on it that when it hit the guy's hand, he's like, whoa, like that. Like it, it injured him, like he was in pain. Okay, so let's understand what the force relationships are going on inside here to cause this to occur. Okay, we're gonna get into that. Because some people, you know, you get these uh, people who don't understand engineering and they go, oh, well, that's a flywheel. You, you can't compare a flywheel to the earth. But it turns out you do and you can. That's the only way you can do it because that's how solid bodies break. A solid body is nothing but a bunch of layers of flywheels, concentric flywheels, you know, getting smaller and smaller and smaller all the way up to there. That's how you end up doing this. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the biggest one slice out of the equator, okay? We're gonna cut that ring out and we're gonna show you um, the zones of force 
okay? We're gonna show you the heavy force zone, all right? And that's why in engineering, you use rings to understand this. So let's just get to the onion now so we can learn about the zones of force and why the flywheel is how you analyze this. It's the only way. And the right way, by the way. So let's just clean up this onion a little bit. Just take the layer off. And you know, this is the type of thing that, it's just so simple. And yet, people are still hanging on to that globe for dear life, you know. Okay. Should have done this ahead of time maybe, but that's okay. Yeah, just take there. me a second. All right, so we got the onion. Now we're gonna show you the force zones. Okay, so I'm gonna cut it in half. Not quite through the equator, it's a little bit more of a northern latitude, but it's okay. There. Okay, you see that? Those are all the zones of force. And the one on the outside, the ring on the outside, is the heavy force zone. Okay, heavy force zone. Okay, that's where all the force accumulates. And as you go up the onion, okay, towards the North Pole, the diameter of the rings gets smaller, okay, but always the outside ring is going to be the heavy force zone, okay? Pretty easy to understand. So that, okay, so that's when you look at it when you cut open the equator, okay? You got these rings, okay? The equator, we're just taking the top off, showing you the force zones, but when it breaks, okay, here's the North Pole now, it breaks this way, Okay, that's the thing you have to understand. Okay, that's the only way it could possibly break. Okay, and you'd be looking. So we're gonna show that with a set of rings. Okay, so we're gonna take a slice out of this onion. And then I'm gonna show you some styrofoam rings. Okay, so we're gonna slice this right there. Okay, we're just gonna have that thin slice. Okay, and you, you realize this is just a bunch of thin slices. Let me just do it. Okay. So, let's say this is the north, right? See, we've got a bunch of, we've got this flywheel ring here with the heavy force zone all the way around there, okay? All the way around. Okay, then we got this ring. There's another flywheel. The heavy force zone is the outer ring. Okay, do you want me to take it off to show you? I'll do it. Okay, that's the heavy force zone. It's the outer ring, okay, the outer ring. Here's the flywheel, okay? This outer ring here, okay, that ring right there, that's the heavy force zone, okay? Put it back on. And then all the other rings on the inside, there's less force because you're spinning slower. Okay, pretty simple, okay? And that's all the globe is. It's a bunch of flywheels like this, okay, stacked on top of each other, okay? And it's spinning this way, remember? Okay, but when it breaks, the interesting thing is this, when it breaks, that heavy force zone ring breaks right here, okay, just pretend you're just dealing with the ring, I'll just take the heavy force zone ring off, okay, that's how it breaks, 
breaks like that, okay? Just like that. So you can imagine, okay, we just took the equator off. Okay, right there's the equator. Okay, North Pole is up there. This is the equator. Watch, it breaks like that. And then every other ring on top of here does the same thing. And if you have material on the inside here, if you're not living on a hollow sphere, all of the rings will break like this, as if you sliced it with a knife because the force acts along the diameter, okay? This knife is the diameter. All right? And remember, we did that with this. Remember this, okay? We had the globe. Here's the equator, okay, it's spinning like this. And the force is pushing out like that onto the outer edge, okay? Okay, and you see that line is the diameter, it's gonna break right there and right there. This is the slice, as if you cut it with a knife. So we'll just flip it, okay, North Pole, and it just splits like that. Okay, because your forces are pushing out. This is the force from all the concentric rings. Okay? It's all pushing that way. And then they all break the same. Okay? So, let's just show you with these rings here. The okay, video is going faster than I expected, that's good. Because it is getting dark faster than I expected. So we'll take some colors out of here and we'll just review that. You know, maybe I should have started with this first, I don't know. We'll see in the editing <laughs> what happens. Well, okay, fine. So let's say the outer ring is the heavy force zone. So I'm gonna make it red. Okay. We'll just color it red. <laughs> oh man, so this is just, you know, dollar store materials, anybody can do this. Jeez, I hope it doesn't get too dark on me out here, I'm going to have to really hurry. And I'll probably end up, you know, doing this video more than once because I don't know why people are just not getting it. Okay, so this is the heavy force zone. All right. There it is. And that's why you only need to study the outer ring because that's where all the major force is. All the rest of the rings, they don't matter. Okay, that's why in engineering, the ideal situation is literally a thin ring with an imaginary axis and the ring is spinning. That's how you do the math. Okay, that's the core math involved here. The correct math. So we'll just do this one blue. 
quickly. So some people, you know, they're one guy he tries to confuse people. with math <laughs> that only applies to objects on the surface. So don't let them fool you. Okay, we'll, we'll talk a little bit about that in a second. Okay. At the end of how he tries to fool people. So, might as well just... Well, no you don't. Okay. Okay. <laughs> wow, it's getting dark. Unbelievable. Too fast. I'm like in the trees here. Took too long, but that's okay. We're gonna get it done. All right. So, so we colored in the rings. Okay, so heavy force zone equator, the next you know, zone, if you look internally, is going to be this. It's a weaker force and then weaker, okay? And then as you go up the, the globe, you get another flywheel here, okay? The surface speed is going to be a little slower here. Here it's a th over a thousand miles an hour. <laughs> Not even solid titanium can handle that, let alone a cracked up globe. And as you go up like that. Now when this breaks, just remember, when it breaks, okay, if it's spinning this way, <laughs> this is tricky. It's going to break. We're going to slice it this way, okay, down the longitude, all right? Well, lucky I got another set here. Okay, so this is that slice out of the equator, the onion slice that we took, remember? We took that slice right out of the equator, this is it right here, okay? And this is how it breaks, and why the apple gets sliced down in half. Okay, I'm just going to slice it up here. I feel like a chef today. Okay. So it's going to break like this. Okay, we're going to slice the rings all down here. Okay, that's along the diameter. So I'm just going to cut the big one for now. Oh man. Okay. So here's the equator. Breaks like that. And then the next flywheel ring on top of this, up here, it's also going to break like that. All the way up to the little guy up here. They're all going to break like this. Okay? So when they all break like that, 
what happens? It's like you slice the apple down the longitude. Simple, okay? Don't tell me you can't understand that, all right? This is what's gonna happen then. It's like you sliced it down here, all right? Because in here, you got all the rings, like we said with the onion, all right? Remember the onion, okay? It's just a stack of flywheels, all right? Stack of flywheels, all right? One layer, then the next one, and it stacks up. They're all spinning like this, then they all break this way. And that's why the apple comes apart this way, even though it's spinning like that, okay? Simple, right? So just remember, it's very easy. It's very easy. The force relationships in the equator like I might have to continue this down by the beach <laughs> it's getting a little dark but just remember in the equator okay that's the equator that's the force relationships okay from across the diameter boom it's pushing out of course that's going to cause this ring to break like this, okay? That's how it's gonna break, just like that. And then every ring on top of that's gonna do the same thing. And that's gonna e equate to like a line going all the way up. This line here, it's gonna break all the way up to the North Pole. It's just gonna break like that. So that's why it breaks along the longitude. Okay, but the thing is, it can break along any longitude, okay? Any longitude. Oh, I've got some, some light down here. Okay, good. So it can break along any of the longitudes. You don't know where it's, it's going to go. So that shows you how much force is in the heavy force zone. It's so much. And when you're doing a flywheel, sometimes you can put a metal band around it, maybe have a weaker material on the inside. But no matter what, the strongest metal you can find will not be able to survive a thousand miles per hour. Nothing. Okay, now think about gravity, how weak it is. It's so weak. And what this uh, clown tries to do, this uh, Polster X, weirdo he'll take the math that applies to objects on the surface of the globe like this okay so if you were on the surface of the globe and this is the radius to the center of the globe and you're going round and around like this like this whoa <laughs> Okay, you know what I mean. Okay, that's ball and string math. So let me make this more safe so it doesn't fly out. Okay. Oh, <laughs> right in the head. Okay, so it's going like this. You're going around the equator. This ball is sitting on the equator, okay? And the string is the radius, all right? Well, the math that applies to the ball or to the person standing on the globe. That's what this ball could be, okay? Okay, the math that applies to that varies in inversely with radius. So you divide by radius. So the bigger the radius, you're gonna get a weaker, um, force trying to throw you off the surface of the fake globe, okay? But, so this guy, 
tries to take that, only that part of the equation that applies to somebody standing on the globe, and you'll say, see, gravity opposes it 300 times. It's a mathematical calculation. And therefore, the hoop stress, this heavy force, <laughs> the force that develops in here, just trillions of PSI for the fake globe, that won't even develop in the first place. While the ball is uh, spinning on its axis at full tilt over a thousand miles per hour. So, to cut it short, and simply put, no broken body can spin. So that right there ends the globe, okay, period. But um, if you want to say a solid sphere is going to spin, it's not going to work. Gravity is not going to save that. That calculation for somebody standing on the globe that depends on how big the radius is that has no relevance to what's going on when an intact body is spinning like a top. You can pretend this is a sphere, it doesn't matter. But it's spinning, this is the, just the equator slice and it's spinning like a top, okay? The axis is just right through there. That's the North Pole. And you're spinning like a top or a car tire or your hard drive, doesn't matter, okay? You need a solid object to do that, okay? And what happens then is the math does not depend on radius anymore because in this case, the axis is at the center of mass of the body that's spinning, whereas before on the string, where was the rotation axis? Away from the ball that was going round and round. It was far away, okay? Nothing to do with the ball. And so, all you can get there is tension in the string. And if the string's really huge, the tension's gonna be really low. But here, since the body itself is spinning, the tension is gonna develop in the heavy force zone. And radius is irrelevant here because as you increase the radius, that does decrease the force, but wait a minute, you're also increasing the weight. You're increasing the mass. So look at this inner ring here. Look at the radius of it, okay? Now, if I jump to the bigger ring, I've increased the mass, haven't I? I've added about that much to it, let's say. Well, it turns out that that cancels out the decreasing of the force effect that the radius has, because you're dividing by it, because increasing the mass is on the top of the equation, F equals MA. <laughs> so it cancels out. Radius cancels out of the equation. So he tries to use math that only pertains to some idiot standing on the equator like this. There's his legs, standing there, he's going round and round. Who cares? That's got nothing to do with this at all. Okay, this is its own thing with its own math, its own force relationships. And it acts along the diameter so that one half of this is going to break from the other half. Okay, um, might as well just draw that in even. Get the black paint. So you understand here, like there's no way out of this. You can't call gravity or nothing. It just... It's a whole different thing, different force relationships. Simple as that. Okay, so this. Okay. All right, you see that? It's gonna break along this line right there. And then this half is gonna separate from this half. Okay, and that can occur anywhere. It can occur here, can occur here, okay? Anywhere you want. You don't know, okay? It might, might occur on this one, might occur over here. You don't know, and it's constantly spinning. So it's the same breaking force at every single point here, okay? 
so it's it's a hopeless situation for uh, the idiot who's been preaching that it just doesn't work it will never work okay it's false there's no textbook that will back him up okay it's just his imagination trying to conflate the math that applies to people standing on the outside of the ball and the math that applies to a solid ring that's like the simplest situation of this could be a solid sphere hollow sphere doesn't matter everything reduces to what happens to a single ring be it a sphere be it a hollow sphere makes no difference it reduces to this when you understand this that it's just going to break apart like that and the force just acts along here once you understand that once you understand this okay it's over all you need to show is this it's done okay and i have that the engineering uh, page is up spin one dot flat dot wtf it starts there then there's spin two dot flat dot wtf and spin three dot flat dot wtf you know and i have a series of three videos before this instead of spin one two three just put split one dot flat the wtf split two and split three um what more can i possibly say okay it's it's just that simple so don't let anybody fool you gravity and all this has nothing to do with anything here it can't do anything okay it's the wrong math he tries to use it's just the only people he can fool are people who want to be fooled okay who don't want to accept reality that's all okay and the bonus for the end here okay the bonus is gonna be hey guys hey just doing a YouTube video it's gotten a bit dark Hey, yeah, it's all good. Yeah, go right ahead. Thanks. Okay, so you stand in here. Okay, here's the equator. You stand in here. Okay, that means you're gonna be, if you're gonna be looking to the horizon at eye level, you're gonna be looking down this way. Okay, how are you gonna see the sun? <laughs> You'll never see it. Every sunset proves you don't live on this. All you do, you take this, you put a ruler on it, uh, this, okay? This knife is your line of sight if you're standing straight up and you're looking south, okay? This knife is your line of sight. The sun is, is over here. Your line of sight is going straight down, okay? You're never gonna see the sun that's way over there, all the way this way. Maybe if you bent your head all the way back, all right? So this here, right there, you just debunked the idea that you live on a ball, okay? Okay? And that's the end of the globe.